Today we're looking at Linux distros and I'm going to rank them in a tier list. It's a completely personal preference. It's completely full of bias. I'm not taking into account any technical historical factors here. Let's get right into it. Here we are. We have Ascended tier, which is the God tier, but I've called it Ascended to be a slightly different S through to F. Skipping a few characters after D, skipping E. So I'm going to set a baseline for this tier list where I think, let's say, B tier is. Pretty good, solid Linux distribution. So Debian, B tier. It's a standard OS, completely solid. I would be happy to use it forever, pretty much. B tier, average Linux distro. That's our baseline. And then let's just go. So we've got Fedora here. This Ascender tier, straight away, hitting it with the Ascender tier. Fedora. This is the Linux distribution to end all Linux distributions. Once you've found Fedora, you've found your home. It stopped distro hopping for me. It might do for you as well. Uh, perfect in every way. Ubuntu, hmm, C tier. It's just a worse Debian, why would you use it? Like, bruh, come on. It's really popular. It's grown the Linux scene a lot. I don't like all the extra stuff. Like, I wouldn't use Ubuntu as a server. I prefer Debian because it's more stable, even though the packages can be more out of date. But yeah, C tier. Slackware. I'll put Slackware at B tier, mainly because of its history. I mean, I know I didn't even say I, I would rate it on its history, but come on, it's basically the oldest Linux distribution out there, right? B tier. I might rank it C tier, actually, because I wouldn't be comfortable using it. I'd be comfortable using Debian. Maybe I'll put it D tier, okay. Because I'd also be comfortable using Ubuntu if I'd be comfortable using Debian, right? So Slackware, D tier. I, it feels quite bad putting it there, but I'm putting it there. We've got Void Linux. This is S F tier. It's terrible distribution. Just use Arch, right? If you want to build your own packages. This is just smaller repositories. Why do you use it, right? Uh, worthless. Waste of your time if you use Void Linux, honestly. Uh, Suzy Linux, or Suza, if you want to pronounce it correctly. Uh, this goes in the Ubuntu tier. Um, Zyper or Zipper is a decent package manager, uh, uh, but I don't like... They, they make you use, I think it's Yast, Y-A-S-T, which is like their, their portal into the, the system. If you don't configure something through there, it basically will overwrite whatever changes you've done. Pulls control away from the user. Android. Android is a Linux distribution. Uh, and I'll actually, even though it's full of Google shite, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it B tier. I use Android on my phone. It's fine. It's, it's the best operating system for phones for consumers, basically. You can maybe like something like Lineage is better. That's not on here and I've never used it before. Arch Linux, I'm gonna put a Ascended tier as well. Arch gets an Ascended tier. This could also stop your distro hopping depending on what kind of person you are. I'm quite lazy, so I just like to install things and not, not have to build my whole system up from the ground up. I, I like being able just to, to go at it. And I, I used Arch for about a year and a half. Uh, and it was fine, it was pretty good. Ascended, it, it's a great distro. It has probably the coolest logo of all Linux distributions as well. Fedora's logo is rubbish. If this was a logo tier list, Fedora would be below F tier. It is that bad. It looks like bloody Facebook. Bruh. React OS, trying to be Windows. Uh, and so for that, it gets an F tier. Interesting project. Uh, we got LARBs. <laughs> we, we're not going to talk about that. I don't know what this is. FreeBSD. Okay. Not a Linux distribution, but I'm putting it A tier. I've used it for things like firewalls. I wouldn't use it on a desktop, really, or a server for that matter. If I was putting it on a server, I'd use OpenBSD, which I don't know if I've put in this list. So yeah, A tier though, pretty good, really interesting. B tier, I'm putting it in B tier. Jean2, ascended again. One of the big three, could stop your distro hopping if you like to portage your way through a package manager uh, and then emerge out the other side uh, with a package, ha ha ha. Yeah, really interesting. I've used this myself. Surprisingly useful on servers if you're running really intensive applications, which you might be. Uh, if you're like the stock market, you'd be running on Gen 2. Also, powers Chromebooks, if you didn't know that, which could bring it down, you know, but it's not the Gen 2's fault, right? Uh, I would also put Fun2 up here as well, but whatever. Uh, GUIX, G-U-I-X, this is interesting, it uses the Nix package manager. It's an interesting project, but I wouldn't use it myself, so I'm gonna put it at D tier as well. Uh, <laughs> we've got Amazon Linux here, Jeff based OS. I don't really see a point to this. You just use CentOS like back in the day. It comes, if this is like if you buy Amazon's AWS servers, it, they, they come with Amazon Linux on. So yeah, I don't like it. F tier, F tier for Amazon Linux. Jeff, not so based OS. Uh, Kai Linux, okay. This is the one, this is surprisingly common for new Linux users because they're all like, Script kiddies, and they're like, oh, I'm gonna, gonna bring like Mr. Robot and hack. <laughs> I can hack my neighbor's Wi-Fi. Uh, to be honest, it's a complete waste of time if you're not a penetration tester. If you are, I mean, it's okay. 
I guess. But uh, for that reason, uh, I'm putting it in F tier. It's used too much for the wrong purposes. A lot of people will just say, I'm installing Kali Linux as my first Linux distribution because I've got all the tools there so I can use them if I want to. Okay, that's bad for so many reasons. One, you can just install the tools anyway if you want. And two, it's really insecure by default because it's made to hack into things. <laughs> hack into things. Yeah, like, like you log in as root by default, it's got a ton of insecure policies on it. Not good, misleads a lot of people. If used correctly though, if you are, if I was a penetration tester and not a system admin, this would maybe even be a sended tier, right? But I'm not, so it's a biased tier list, of course. We got Linux from scratch. Interesting project, can learn a lot from it. I'm gonna put it at A tier, actually. It's not a complete Linux distribution, but if you go through Linux from scratch, the amount of knowledge you get is really great. So I'm putting it at A tier there. Let me know if you want a Linux from scratch video, we shall do that. Linux Mint, right, controversial opinion, S tier. It's basically Ubuntu, which I put at C tier, but I really like the Cinnamon desktop. It's amazing. I've installed this on like my grandfather's laptop. Uh, he managed to use it just fine. He'd never used Windows before, to be honest, so I could have gone with anything, but it's brilliant. I would recommend this to any new Linux user, honestly. I think it's great, a great, great distribution. Uh, and Cinnamon desktop is mwah. And I use Nemo as my file manager right now. I like what they're doing. Manjaro, I'll put that at A tier as well. It's basically Arch, but easy. Maybe I'll put it at S tier, it's pretty good. Put it at A tier for now, A tier for now. Uh, Red Hat, Enterprise Linux. Not sure how I really feel about Rahel now. It's proprietary Linux distribution, but they were bought by IBM last year or the year before, and they, they've done some weird stuff. So I'll, I'll put it in D tier. OpenBSD, now this one I, I would use on servers, uh, like bastions or jump boxes or what have you. Uh, I'm gonna put it on S tier as well, actually. I really like OpenBSD. I much, much, much prefer it to FreeBSD for reasons I can't really explain. It's just more security focused and, you know, it's, it's almost like minimal in a way. It's pretty good. Uh, CentOS, so CentOS. So previously I would have actually put this at Ascended tier. I use this on all my servers, but CentOS 8 now is no longer like a server distribution. It's some weird continuous release, which is bad for servers really. So I'm putting it F tier. I hate CentOS now. It's a rubbish, rubbish, rubbish distribution, mainly because of IBM trying to turn it into something that it shouldn't be. Speaking of CentOS, is this it? Is this, I'm assuming CKY, this is Rocky Linux, which is the replacement for CentOS 8 that is what CentOS 8 should be. So for that factor, I'm putting it at S tier. Rocky Linux, my now go-to server distribution. Puppy Linux, okay. Interesting distribution, use it on, um, can like plug, it, install it on a USB and then boot up from the USB on your computer and then you can pull the USB out and the Linux distribution will still be running in the RAM of that computer. So it's really cool, like anywhere or using a friend's laptop or, you know, at an airport on one of their computers if they allow you to do that. You know, it's just cool to have, use a computer and then pull out the USB pen and still have it running your distro because it's all stored in the RAM, right? It's a really tiny Linux distribution, similar to Nopix, which is not on this list actually. You know, you can turn off your computer and as long as they don't instantly freeze the RAM, there is no trace you are ever there. Unless you've written something to the hard drive, I guess, but you wouldn't do that really. But yeah, it's cool. It's good for like rescuing things. It's just handy to like carry around a USB with this on. You know, someone's like, eh, my laptop's broke. You can be like, bam. Puppy Linux, easy, set up, done. You don't install it. It loads itself to RAM. Doesn't like wipe any of their stuff. You can then use the, the Linux tools to debug their laptop. It, it's great, it's wonderful. Good tool in an engineer's toolkit. Uh, Source Mage, A tier. Very interesting distribution. You cast spells from a grimoire to install packages. And to install it, you actually have to sort of navigate really old install guides with like really new ones. And then you've got to go into the IRC channel and ask for help there. But it's pretty cool. And I really like what they're trying to do. I think it's very interesting. I've installed it and used it before myself. The package manager for Source Mage is written in Bash as well, which is quite cool, right? Pretty cool. And it, it's all built from source, obviously. So they're like Gen 2. Not as many packages, but Interesting enough. And it has a cool little bird as their logo. Really cool stuff. I don't know why it squared all these pictures. I'm using I'm not using the GIMP anymore. I'm using Tear Maker. Just easy. I tried GIMP and I just get, get fed up with it, honestly. If if I'm doing a Linux software tier list, GIMP would be at F tier. Critter would be at the top. Um right. Nix OS, a bit like GUIX, but they actually sort of made the package manager. Really interesting. I'm gonna put it at B tier. It might be the future, you know. Like in ten years' time, you'd look back at this tier list and be like, <laughs> You put Nix OS at B tier. Everyone only uses Nix OS now. It's ascended tier that is now. Like in the it could be the future of Linux. It almost tells a story of what you've done with your distribution as you install packages and change files and stuff. You build up like a, almost a config file for your distro, and then you take that config file and you slap it on a new install, and it'll basically make it the, the same as it was. I'm never seen it if I'm explaining that correctly. I, I might do a video on Nix. Interesting project. 
Solus. Now I like this project too, and I like the Budgie desktop quite a lot. Uh, I've re also recommended this for new Linux users, although it's quite bad because I didn't have experience with it, but for them it was good. So that, that means it's good. I'll put it a B tier. Temple OS, not a Linux distribution, but I thought I should put it here. Technical achievement, I put this like at S tier, but for usage, uh, yeah, it, it's F tier. Come on. It doesn't have a network stack. So I assume this is Alpine Linux. Okay, ah, elementary OS. Uh, and so this must be Alpine. Okay, right. Alpine Linux, used in containers, mainly. A uh, really small Linux distribution that, that has no GANU. So you can be like, if, if you say, I'm using Linux, and then like some neckbeard says, uh, neckbeard, he goes, he goes on it. Actually, you're using GANU slash Linux, or as I've recently taken to calling it, GANU plus Linux. You can just say, Richard, no. In fact, I'm using Linux on its own. I'm not using any GNU software with this distribution, which you're not because it's Alpine Linux. It runs non-GNU versions of the core utils. It's very cool. Um, a bit like BusyBox in that regard. It might be one of the most commonly used Linux distributions depending on how big containers are. I mean, they're everywhere, right? I use containers a lot. But th th that, that, that all uses Alpine because it's such a small footprint. So all you need is this little Alpine Linux distribution to run your application on top of That's all it needs to do. It doesn't need to do anything other than run your application. So it basically needs like glibc and I don't know, for me, like a Python interpreter. So you can just install that. Um, so for that reason, that gets an S tier from me. Alpine Linux, S tier. Good work. Last but not least, this is elementary OS. So this is like another good beginners of the next distribution. I believe it's based off Ubuntu. And I would recommend it to people who have come from Mac because it's Mac-like. Uh, and I guess it's now like Windows 11, which is Mac-like, which is KDE-like, which is elementary-like. Whoa. So for that reason, it's CETA, same as Ubuntu. It's a standard, like, bleh, distro. For that matter, all the Ubuntu spins, which are just memes anyway, and don't matter and shouldn't exist, go in, in the CETA as well. They, they should exist. They're fine projects, but, you know. Basically, if I like it a lot and could use it permanently, ascended tier, if I use it for a lot of things or recommend it really highly, S tier, A tier is very interesting and usable as a learning experience or just anything, or it's cool. B tier, the standard, sort of the baseline. Uh, C tier, still would recommend it, but a bit meh. D tier, wouldn't recommend it, slightly interesting. F tier, well, why does it exist? It's not doing anything interesting. Uh, to me, maybe Void Linux is, but and, and React OS certainly is doing interesting things, but to me, the... Yeah. And CentOS, what a fall from grace CentOS has had. I mean, this used to be the Linux system I, I used the most. I might have even put it at Ascender tier, but hey-ho, it's changed because IBM bought Red Hat. What do you think of that tier list? You probably don't agree with any of it, so tell me in the comments what you didn't agree with, because yeah, there'll probably be a lot of discussion because my opinions are my own opinions. They're not yours. You're entitled to your own. Uh, this this is not a be-all and end-all. Are we missing anything? Where's Pop OS? I had Pop OS installed. Uh, installed, uh, included. If Pop OS, it, Pop OS goes where a bunch goes. Right, we're running out of time. The camera's about